Hi, welcome. So I'm just having my morning tea and I wanted to have a conversation about today's pertinent affairs. I don't have at all a scheme of what I'm going to talk about, but basically I wanted to mention, you know, the friend zone, this concept that men want to make into something that they are entitled to complain about formally like they have really made a proper argument on it like they've really compartmentalized and made it into a strategy and you know it's just ridiculous and I've spoken about this before I wrote an article called I think it was called a friend zone or something around those lines but I had a I had an incident incident yesterday with a friend of mine that concerns this and it just makes you think a bit again because it hadn't happened to me in a while to be in that position and I'm really kind of careful but what I'm here to say is I don't think we should be careful I don't think we should be made to feel guilty for being friendly or for being polite, but then maybe we shouldn't be polite. We should, this is my tip to any girl that's dealing with the friend zone, as to any person who's dealing with an irrational, self-entitled prick, because that's basically what it is. My advice is don't give it any time, don't give it any attention, identify the behavior that's going to lead to that explosion because it's an explosive aggressive thing that happens when they when they react that way and just remove yourself from the situation and don't engage and it can be a bit upsetting if you've been becoming friends with a guy or with a person. I don't even really like to divide things into genders. If you're becoming friends with someone and you start feeling like they've, they're starting to be a bit passive aggressive about things, just stop. Just realize that they're not your friend because they're not. And that's what I told him in the end. I'm just, I just have to be vocal about it. The problem with women is that no matter how much we want to make ourselves believe that we don't need men, we actually do kind of. So we are mindful that we don't want to become, we don't want to start a fight with the male population and the male population, they really support one another. And that is quite truthfully the only reason why we put up with this behavior. And we shouldn't but just if I'm honest to myself again I'm trying to be really honest to myself if I think what are the repercussions if I cut off from my life every man who might have a hope at the back of their head of sleeping with me because I know that it can lead to a problem if I do that First of all, I'm going to get rid of most of my friends. And second of all, if I continue to be their friend and then once they start getting passive aggressive, I confront them, then inevitably they're going to go to their other male friends who are also my friends and they're all kind of going to blacklist me. So I'm very aware of that women do become blacklisted um, amongst the male community. I think that's really unfair. But let's put that aside for a moment, because that's something that we have to tackle at some point. I don't know, because there's still so many industries that are male dominated. For example, the one that I work in, it's like I couldn't get rid of all men. If all men became aggressive towards me, which is completely unfair that they would do that just because I don't want to sleep with them. But if they did, which they could, then I'd be pretty fucked. However, the good thing about this 
and this is a really good thing, is that I haven't experienced this behavior from anybody who is actually powerful. I haven't experienced this passive aggressive um, explosive reactions from men who are very successful or very, very attractive. So ultimately, if you think about it, if we just isolate the ones that are behaving like children, which are not really that helpful in your life anyway, then we're good. Let's see, because what does this... I'm trying to read because I made some notes yesterday of things that I was... they were just going through my head. Yeah, the reasons behind it. So why would a man pretend to be your friend for a while and seem to be actually having fun and I'm sure they are genuinely but then at some point or maybe from the beginning that's the strategy but at some point they want to sleep with you which we all know will not work anyway because once we have once you have sex then the dynamic changes and you're not friends anymore so they're just being dumb with themselves about it it's just gonna end in disaster because they don't really want to marry you anyway. It's not like they're offering marriage. They just want what they want at that moment. It's really childish behavior. Everybody wants what they want when they want it. That has nothing to do with relationships. You could take any subject and put a person there. And if this person wants what they want when they want it, and they don't get it and in response they throw a tantrum that person is just being childish it has nothing to do with relationships it has nothing to do with women you can try to rationalize it there's no rational explanation possible if you tell me that men need sex women too mm, yeah they want one thing, I want another. I'm not very happy if somebody's making me waste my time and I'm investing a lot of time in being there for that person because I consider them to be my friend. So, you know, that's uh, your friend's duties and you're making your concessions that you make to your friends. And then at the end, the person, not only they fuck off, they actually become, they turn against you. They become aggressive, they become violent, then they try to blacklist you. I mean, what the fuck? How on earth am I the one to be made feel guilty about that? And why on earth am I still wanting to be polite and friendly to these jerks? They're just jerks. My advice to myself and to everybody listening and if you're younger than me then take it because I've wasted years of my life with this shit is identify the behavior and run from it run from it fast and if you're thinking like I am which is reasonable to think so that you're going to get into trouble with the whole of the male community or with the whole circle of friends or whatever because they support each other. Don't be. Because actually the powerful ones don't do that. Or don't do that as much because they feel good with themselves. They don't need to do this. Case in point, all of the men that I've slept with, there was never that dynamic. And some of them I didn't sleep with for the first maybe four years. Like. Because relationships develop naturally. I don't decide what I'm going to do and what is... You know, you know these arguments that I always come up with. What is sex? Is sex kissing? Is sex penetration? So if I don't want to kiss somebody, then I'm not having sex with them. Or if I kiss somebody, then they're not my friend anymore. Or if we do everything but we don't have penetration, then that's not sex. 
and if you do something and then you don't want to finish with the other thing then that's not sex or it's just this is just all so such bullshit and so subjective and so such a non non argument so in some men that i have met and at some point some sort of romanticism developed it could have been at the beginning or at the end it didn't make any difference with these men they always behaved the same way they never gave me any passive aggressiveness they always were friendly with me i can think of a couple of i just don't want to give names but i know i mean if you know me you know which ones they are they were super lovely from the beginning which is the best thing you can do if you want a girl just don't expect it but it, it a girl or anybody again it's about people it's not about girls so they were super friendly super nice they were real friends you know they were there for me they helped me if at some point something developed and i still have some friends where nothing has developed and they still have been there for me and there still has not been any passive aggressive anything and i'm not discarding that i will ever have sex with them never say never but then what is sex okay not going to get into that again but anyway these people if at any points there have been points maybe where one night or whatever because i have been in pretty compromising situations i mean i am a little bit i love flirting that's the other thing i flirt with everything that moves i'm friendly i'm polite so if i don't even, and i'm also i'm a creative i'm an artist i'm an and i'm a nudist so all of these things i realize can make it a struggle to some people so if there have been situations where we were filming naked or something like that and i saw that they would like to have sex the kind of men that are secure in themselves just they just took it as a bit of fun and they either went out of the room literally just removed themselves from the situation or and this is something i guess you can also you can always do is just call someone else like if you need sex right away whether you're a woman or you're a man and the person that you're with doesn't want to have sex with you whether he's a man or a woman or dating or not because sometimes you're dating and you don't want to have sex with the person like i've been seeing a guy sometimes we meet up and i don't want to have sex with him what's that about what's that expectation about you know you just can't these things are not black and white and they're not obligations and if they become an obligation then you're fucking hiring the person that's not a relationship of sex or like you know how some men say oh i was inviting her to all these things and i wasn't even sleeping with her well what difference does that make if you don't want to invite the person be it male female whatever if you don't want to invite them don't invite them don't expect something in return again nothing to do whether they're female male relationship dating whatever because if you do then you're just saying that you're using prostitution that's what it is that's what a transactional relationship is so if that's what you want then you should say so if you meet me and you say hey i love you you're really cool let's hang out for a bit and i'm interested in having sex with you then i will tell you okay i will consider that how much have you got because otherwise why you know if i don't have if i don't want to and there's no reason i'm not getting anything out of it because i'm not if you don't want to do something whatever it is then you're not getting anything out of it emotionally unless there's something else like a job or money or something there has to be a reason so if you know if you're not getting anything out of it then why would you do it just to please somebody else we got to stop doing that 
we got to stop thinking that doing these things would please people because it's not pleasing people. It's just giving people the right idea about how things work and making every relationship into a transactional relationship because we're basically, we're all doing things we don't want to do, which ultimately hooks us up with people that we don't want to be with. We don't share the same interests because it's just all, it's what I was saying the other day about values and concessions. If your whole life is based on concessions and sometimes we do it to ourselves, we like the challenge. So we choose people. I don't know why we do this. And men do it with girls, for example. If if there's a girl that doesn't like you, then you want that one. And with everything, if someone else has an interest that you don't have or is better at something that you're not, then you want that. You want to get there. It's really stupid. It's like the whole thing about with jobs, how everybody wants to do the job that they're not skilled at. And then if they don't get that job, then they call it discrimination. Like, come on, have a little bit of common sense. Like if you're a really weak, small person and the job consists in lifting fucking stones, then maybe you're not the best one for that job. Just forget it. Just go do what you can do. That's not discrimination, that's common sense and reason and logic and... So I guess that's, there's a lot of that in this. And the issue is when people make it into a thing to feel entitled for it, which is what's happening with the sex thing. There's this underlying current, there's this unspoken rule where you can't hang out with anybody or with a guy for long or somehow we have to figure out, women have to figure out what the man is thinking because they're not really gonna tell you. Because if they told you, you could just say no, but they don't tell you. If someone asked me right away, do you wanna have sex with me at some point? I may say no, but they don't ask that question because they don't want the answer. So if if you're a guy and you don't want the answer, assume the worst and then leave me alone, you know? Or if not, ask the question. If you want to know, ask the question. Don't become passive-aggressive about it. And deal with the answer just like I deal with anything that I don't get, that I want, which is, trust me, a lot of things and a lot of people. So let's think for a moment how do women react when they don't get well much more logically and much more civically actually if a woman wants a man who's very attractive and very powerful and maybe kind of out of her league she will just try to stick around and be there for him and if he doesn't show any interest That's it, it just kind of fizzles out. I don't know any woman who would feel entitled to that man to the point of exploding on him and calling him a bitch and and blacklisting to all her friends. What kind of... That's just so bad. What kind of person would do that? How has that become the norm? amongst the male population. That's kind of shitty. I don't think men should accept that, by the way. To any men listening, I think you should actively try to change that within your circles of friends. Because that's just immature, backwards, irrational, shitty behavior towards people and it's probably affecting you in your life in other areas because as I said there's nothing about relationships that would make them into uh, something else it's the same thing as everything else something you want that you can't get so you have to learn to deal with it 
And at the end of the day, I think it's better for everybody to try to get along with everybody. I don't think it's good to think that you're not going to be able to hang out with half of the population because they give you a stiffy. That's a really bad position to be in, and if you're in that position, you should try to overcome it. And you should try to make this disappear instead of giving it more fire. And women, we should confront it head on and admit that it's unacceptable and not tolerate it. And yeah, we should blacklist the people who are doing it. Because it's, it's kind of a bribery. They're putting you in a bad situation. It's kind of a threat. At the end of the day, that's what it is. We're being threatened. And then we give in to things. Happens all the time. I mean, we don't even talk about it. This is, see, okay, so this is something that only ever comes up when you are talking amongst men. Because amongst women, the fact that we are threatened if we don't offer sex, it's not even a conversation. Like, we don't even mention it. It's so the norm. Like, it's so normal. We know that that's how it is. And when you talk to a girl and you're like, hey, how was your day? It's like, it's okay, but I, I had to end up giving him a blowjob because, you know, he was just like really expecting it. And I wouldn't even argue that. That's normal. I don't agree with it. It shouldn't be normal. Maybe we should stop considering these things as normal because being constantly living a life where you're just being threatened for everything you're doing is not normal, you know? I don't think a man would put up with it. We're gonna stand up more for ourselves and also to eliminate these expectations and this thing where they, if you give something to somebody 100% of the time, then they're gonna end up thinking that that's what you like doing. And then we create this whole mirage of what females like or how females orgasm, like, what's that shit about females being able to orgasm without even touching themselves at all? Like, have you had an orgasm before? Does this happen to anybody? Maybe I should make a different podcast on that, but I'm really interested because I'm really into orgasm. And I believe I have explored it to its full potential, but I can't visualize, I can't understand how that would work. I know with men, because you have, you know, they have the scrotum, so they have stuff in there, so it can actually explode by itself. I think there's some sort of self-combustion happening there, maybe. But with women, and I've had men tell me this very seriously, like, yeah, yeah, I've And they haven't seen it, though. Or if they've seen it, the woman could be faking it. Because, I mean, in women, there's nothing to see. She's not going to ejaculate without touching. Now that would be a feat. But even, even having an orgasm without any sort of contact, a proper orgasm, not just... I mean, yeah, I can see how you could feel things. But to actually get off... You know what I mean when you're actually having that convulsion part? I I don't know. I have never been in that position. I think I would have to be without sex for many months for me to be that aroused. Maybe it would be possible in that way. If I was a nun, maybe nuns can do it. Anyway. We've gone a little bit on a tangent here. So that's all I wanted to say today about um, the situation. 
the situation. I hope you guys are well. Let me know what you think, your experience, what you want to achieve. Let's all be in this together. Seriously, this has to be tackled. This is not cool. It's not cool for either men or women or children or animals. It's just not cool for anybody. So let's be smart, shall we? And kind to one another, like Ellen says. Okay, bye.